So you finally decided to start streaming, hoping to one day be like Ninja or Shroud and get that big fat payday from Facebook, Mixer, or Twitch for streaming on their site. And so you've been watching a bunch of YouTube videos on how to get the best stream quality. And you're probably thinking at this point, is everyone on YouTube a millionaire or something? Because they're all trying to teach you how to do this 1080p 60 FPS stream using these dedicated encoding PCs that have 32 cores and 2080 Ti graphics cards. And the truth is, is that a 1080p 60 FPS stream isn't really that essential. In fact, you know, a lot of the most popular streams started out as really scuffed streams. And if you think about it, it's not like everyone's watching their streams on this 8K HDR ready TV. They're watching on a window, a browser window, or they're watching on their phones. So you really don't need these super high resolution streams. So what this video is gonna be about is getting the best quality stream with the PC that you have now, even if it's starting to show a few miles on it. So I do wanna give a bit of a disclaimer. You can't stream with just any old PC. There are some minimum hardware requirements that we need. So if you wanna stream and play games at the same time, you're gonna need at least a quad core CPU. If you're just gonna do like a just chatting stream, then dual core is fine. And if you don't have the cores, then you're going to want a GPU that has what's known as a hardware encoder. I'll discuss these in a bit, but basically you're going to want one that has NVENC or VCE, or even some CPUs have QuickSync from Intel. I'll put a list of CPUs and GPUs that contain these hardware encoders. So what is a hardware encoder and how do we use them? Well, if you think about encoding, encoding is basically taking the video and audio that you're putting together in your streaming software and compressing it in a way that you can send it to a streaming site. And this compression is basically usually done by the CPU, which takes up a lot of resources. That's why when you start streaming with your CPU, this is done with X264. That's why you see a hit in a lot of the games that you play. Now, a hardware encoder is basically devices built into CPUs, GPUs, and some capture cards. And this can basically do that work without adversely affecting the resources of those devices. So in your streaming software, if it's XSplit, OBS, whatever software it is, you're gonna to wanna to go to your streaming settings. And in your streaming settings, there's usually a drop down menu for the encoders. And if you click here, you can see the available hardware encoders. A lot of times it's set to X264 as default. Now, if you don't see any other options besides X264, you probably don't have a hardware encoder, but it might be that the hardware encoder isn't enabled. A lot of times this is the case for QuickSync. So if you have a QuickSync compatible CPU, I put a link in the description on how you can enable that using the BIOS. So once you've selected the hardware encoder, it's just a matter of setting the highest bitrate possible based on the streaming site that you're broadcasting to. So for example, Twitch only allows a 6,000 bitrate. And the reason for this is that these hardware encoders for the most part aren't as efficient as X264 in compressing that video. So they require a lot more bitrate to get the same kind of image quality that you'd expect. The only exception to this is the newer version of NVENC. So if I had to make one upsell in this video for something that you should improve without replacing the whole PC, it would be getting a 1600 series NVIDIA GPU, if that's better than the current GPU that you have now. So if you have to encode your video using X264, you have to take into account the things that are gonna tax your CPU. And the biggest things that are gonna affect the usage are the size of the video, this is resolution, and the amount of activity going on, this is gonna be frame rate and the stuff going on on the screen. So let's talk about resolution first. So considering sites like Twitch limit the amount of bitrate that you can use, I really recommend sticking with just 720p, so that's 1280 by 720. Now, if you're doing this and you still are seeing your CPU usage spike, I really recommend downgrading the resolution. So going to 480 or 360p, so that's like 640 by 360. Now the people on the 8K TVs might get annoyed with this resolution, but the truth is, is that if you have people like that watching you, then put the donation goal up so that you can buy that super beast PC to encode something for their glorious TVs. So the next most important thing is the FPS. Now I know it's really important, especially for gamers to have 60 FPS, but this can really tax your CPU and you have to make a choice between FPS and resolution. So if you really, really need that 60 FPS, lower the resolution. If you want the higher resolution or crisper images, especially if you're on bigger screens, then lower the FPS and put up the resolution. I actually put together some encoding settings 
I'll leave a link to the settings in the description. Also links to the video, see if you can tell the difference between the different encoding settings. So speaking of FPS and games, it's also important to consider the types of games that you wanna stream. So I know we all wanna stream the latest games on ultra settings, but if your PC is struggling playing Fortnite on low settings without streaming, then streaming high motion games might not be in the cards for you. So you want to stream games that have less things going on on screen. So you want to stream games like card games like Hearthstone or Legends of Runeterra or play retro games, games that are less graphically intensive. Finally, you can get a capture card and you can stream console games. And if your computer can't handle the most basic of games, don't worry, there's still options for you for streaming. So the world of just chatting or desktop streaming or IRL streaming is open to all. Anyone can do it. You can do it with the most potato PC. You can do it with your cell phone. And I think everyone should try and do this type of streaming because it strips away all the distractions really because you have to work on the most important part of streaming. The thing that trumps any type of stream quality, technical stream quality, it's really what helps you develop the real stream quality or the real judgment of people are gonna watch. And that is the actual content. So it doesn't matter if you have 1080p, 60 FPS, if you have amazing overlays, funny alerts, the best microphones, the best lighting, none of that matters. No matter how technically sound the stream is, it does not matter if the content is boring. If you think about some of the top streamers, if you look at the top streamers on any streaming platform, their production quality likely hasn't changed too drastically over the years. I mean, it's gotten maybe a little bit better, a little bit better cameras, but if you think about it, think about streamers like Trout or Aris or Avoiding the Puddle, you don't watch them because they have a fancy blurred background or the green screen. You watch for amazing kills or to hear about smelling the flowers. So sadly, creating interesting content isn't something that you can just easily teach to someone. You're either born with the gift of gab or you work really hard and experiment to find your own niche and your own audience in your own community. But at least if one thing you've taken away from this video is you've taken one worry away, which is just having a stable, watchable stream. So I want to know from you, the viewers, how do you judge stream quality? Does 1080p matter to you? What keeps you watching a stream? And have you ever bought an expensive piece of streaming equipment that really didn't help out too much at all or you didn't use much at all? Let me know in the comments, leave a like if this video was useful and make sure to subscribe if I saved you a few bucks. Catch you on the next one.